Hello everyone, Fanta here and you're watching Fantavision. Today I am discussing something about GameStop a lot of people don't think about when it comes to working there. And that is what happens when a generation is phased out. And what do I mean by that? I mean when we finally stopped carrying PS2 games. And what happened to all those games? How did they get handled? How long did it take? Stuff like that. So. Let's go ahead and just dive in and talk about it. Uh, today, real quick, I am drinking another Voodoo Ranger IPA. This one is only the 7% one. It's not the like ridiculous one. So, yep, just an IPA. It's pretty delicious. I like it a lot. Um, kind of got that refreshing, crisp taste to it. Very herbal, as usual, because it is an IPA. Very hoppy. Um, so, diving right back in. GameStop. Oh my god, I remember when we went from... We had several different orientations of the PS2 games before we finally settled on one. First, we had them in two different decently sized bins, and there were these metal wire bins, and you think that'd be an easy way to kind of keep them in line, but the thing is, is if you have those bins and they're really out of alphabetical order and they're packed as tight as they were you had to take off like the chunk at the very end move it down to a shelf that we actually had to start creating because we ran out of space for ps2 games and then put that down and alphabetize it on that little shelf move back up move that row over here push it up move part of that row over here and you have to do that for every single game if it does not fit on that top part because you want to keep it in relatively alphabetical order but a lot of the times we would wind up with games that are just kind of crap and they would take up a ton of room on that top part we'd have like a million Maddens so that's why we had two bins because then we separated it by price and alphabetization so we had like I think it was a five dollar bin to one side and then the like it was like five ten dollars and below and then ten dollars and up over here and oh my god people would be putting the games from that bin into that bin and this bin into that bin and people would pull games out of that bin and of course they said this line well how much is this game and then i tell them the price but it was in the $5 or the $10 and under bin. How is it more expensive than that? Are you kidding me? Are you, are you kidding me? Have you ever gone to a store, taken something off a shelf that was put in the wrong place and went, oh, well, this HD flat screen TV was on a $15 area. I thought it would just be $15. No, it's what is marked on the box. Why are you even asking me how much this costs? It doesn't make any sense. And the thing also is, with those stupid bins for the PS2, I haven't even talked about discontinuing these games yet. I'm just talking about keeping the older systems in. So what happened during price changes was just, oh, it was a nightmare. You know what we had to do for moving them for alphabetization, but you have to then go through all the different spines, and then you have to, like, yank the game out because they're so tightly packed. And I swear, we ugh, GameStop must be damaging cases because that's exactly how they wanted it. If I let in too much space, they'd be like, what are you doing? Why is there there's so much space? That means there's more area for games to get put so people can see it more. And it's like, well, it's smashing these cases, but they didn't care. They just want to fit more shit. So you have to yank this thing out, put the price tag on there. And it's funny because there were so many price changes that the labels, because you keep putting the sticker over the sticker, and then it's so thick that you can't fit it back in because you've changed the width of the game. So you then have to rip off all the stickers, put them back. iTunes, I swear to God, you changed the width of the game, so you had to, of course, take the stickers, all of them off, put them back on, good to go. Also, with PS2 games, we I don't think we ever had to do this with any other system. I think we stopped doing this. But it made inventory easier. It made sense why they did it. But what didn't make sense is when they started sticking the stickers on the spine of the PS2 games. If you have PS2 games in your collection and you've ever gotten any from GameStop, 
I, I think, even EB Games, I think, did it. You will find some games that have that sticker on the artwork. And if you try to take that off, it's going to take off some of the color. It's going to take off some of that, that artwork. And it might even rip your cover art. And for people like me who want their game collection to look perfect, that's huge. I wouldn't buy a game if I had a sticker on that cover art. So what we started doing is instead, I'm going to set this over here. What we did instead is we would take the case, we pop, open up a little bit, put the plastic parts so it's kind of like hovering above everything else, and then you slide the sticker in on the spine where it's still on that like plastic so it's not actually, or that little paper thing, so it's not actually sticking on the artwork. And then you close it and then the pressure of the case closed and the plastic of the cover, you know what I'm talking about, I don't just, you know, explain the anatomy of a case to you. But when it was closed, it would keep that sticker in there so we didn't have to ruin any more cover arts. Thankfully, I don't think I remember ever putting a single sticker on the cover art itself. I think I was always doing that other method because I knew, I was looking at it from the customer's perspective, I knew I wouldn't want to buy a game like that. So I made sure that nobody else had to have their cover art ruined for the past or future. So, present or future. What is it? I'm not going to go back in time and give them a game. So, that was one of the big issues with older consoles. Because that was the 360 and PS3 are already out at this point. They've been out for a while. I believe we had stopped taking Xbox original games for like the longest time. Which then, if you think about it, doesn't really make sense. Because PS2 games did not work on the PS3. I mean, they worked on the original PS3. The very first one. But then after that, there was no backwards compatibility. So why were we carrying PS2 games and GameCube, but not Xbox original? I'm trying to like figure that out in my mind because it doesn't make any sense. GameCube makes sense. I don't know why they ever discontinued GameCube games from the store because GameCube games you could still play on the Wii. And we discontinued the GameCube before the Wii, or the Wii U came out. It was before the Wii U was even announced and it was being discontinued. I know it was because back then I was a freshman in college I bought a GameCube for 20 bucks which I don't know what GameCubes are going for now but I think that's not a bad deal um, I have like nine GameCubes now and I've gotten them for like three to five bucks each at yard sales with huge lots of games so now I feel like I got ripped off but I'm sure it's still worth more than 20 bucks nowadays because of nostalgia I got I remember one of the stores was in the process of discontinuing GameCube games, but for some reason, they did have a couple. And I just happened to be trading in a game at this particular GameStop, and they had, get, get this, Wind Waker, Super Smash Bros, Pikmin 2, and I think it was Luigi's Mansion, and they were all 75% off. I got Pikmin 2, I think it was like 5 bucks. I think it was like 5 bucks for all of those games each. I just remember walking out of that store, which is a shocked look on my face. It's like, whoa, what just happened? I just got all these really... And they weren't that expensive back then. I mean, they're still expensive. Smash Bros. has always been a very popular game and pretty pricey. Nowhere near what it is now. Now it's like a $60, $70 game. It's ridiculous. But I was still getting these games like this insane discount. And that's because whenever they decide to discontinue carrying one of those systems, they put them at a ridiculous discount. And we're getting to that now, the discontinuation of systems. And when they discontinued the GameCube games, you bet your ass I picked up a bunch of those, even at my store. I missed out on a lot of them because they did what they always try to do before they start marking them down too, too much is they ship them to other stores that are still selling them pretty decently. That's what happened with a lot of our PS2 games when we discontinued those. But the ones that were already really dirt cheap in the sleeves that didn't have cases, like they kind of did what they do now with the Wii and the DS games where they take their really cheap games 
and they just put them in the sleeve instead of putting them in the case. Which, I mean, it's kind of annoying. I mean, it makes me not want to buy anything because it's in just a sleeve. But when we were discontinuing the PS2, these sleeved games, I shit you not, went down to pennies. And they weren't pennying these games out, they just went down to like nothing. And they've done this several times now. This wasn't the only time they did it. So I, I don't know what their thought process is there. I guess they're just trying to get rid of bulk, but I think I bought this like thick of PS2 games for like less than a dollar. And it became, it was like full of the jam pack games, which I know it's just a demo disc, but I don't know about you guys, but I really like demo discs because it's got a variety of games from that era. And when you're thinking about buying a new, like, retro game even now, because back then, I mean, they, they gave them away just so you'd know, oh, well, this game's a lot of fun to demo, I'm gonna go buy it. It's kind of the same thing now, it's the same exact thing. It's like, I play it, oh, I like this game, I'll go pick it up on eBay. So I love the demo discs, it gives you a chance to try a wide variety of games at once, and it's a lot of fun. Also, they've got, like, weird, like, videos on those things, sometimes they have unlockables, like, if you do the save from the demo, you got something in the full game. I think a couple jam-packed discs did that. They had like behind the scenes footage sometimes. They just had really weird off the wall stuff sometimes on those discs. And the menus were so weird. I'll, I'll never forget, one of my first things for my PlayStation 2 was of course jam Pack. I don't remember which volume. I think I have it somewhere just because nostalgia goggles are duct taped to my eyes like I've said in the past. And it was this cool menu where like you're like on a space station and you rotate the games and then you could go up into the space station area and there were trailers and videos of upcoming games and they were cool shit. There, that was some good production value on those things. They were, they kept me coming back. I kept playing those demos. I had so much fun with just a demo disc. Um, and the other game I got, just for those who were curious and care, was ATV Off-Road Fury, which is like, it's just amazing. It's such a fun game, and it's full, it's got the best soundtrack of any game I can think of. I mean, you're in grunge heaven when you're playing that game. Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, okay, I'm moving on. So, when we are discontinuing games, it was like a shipment frenzy. It was crazy. And the thing is, is sometimes, other, like, we would somehow come up as the store that was doing well with a certain discontinued item, and yet for some reason, like, we weren't selling any of it. Why are you shipping us a bunch of PS2 games? So sometimes, while we were shipping out PS2 games to other stores, we would get a huge shipment of PS2 games. We're like, what is going on here? And do you, if you remember my Endless Shipments video about how bad some of the quality was for those games that were being shipped to us, Imagine the PS2 games we're getting. I mean, I'm talking about just train wrecks of cases, like stuff sticky on them, missing cover art. I mean, PS2 games, I don't know what was up with it, but there were so many times that I had to print out cover art. And there's so many people, there was less so in the 360 era, but in the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox original era, there was this weird fad of like putting your games in CD cases. Which I don't know who was buying so many games that they don't have room on like a shelf somewhere to put their games, that they have to put them in a CD case. But a lot of these people would somehow lose all of those cases because they'd box them up, put them in the garage, put them in their attic, um, or just throw them away for some reason, which just kind of breaks my heart as a person that only buys complete inbox um, disc based games but I, I, that would cause us to have to make like a bunch of fake cases for them so those bins were always full of these generic ass cases and whenever we got shipments you bet that every single shipment was full of generic cases and if you think the problem with PS3 games getting loose in the, the uh, or PS4 games getting loose in the box when you get it Oh my god, I, I don't know what the PS2's problem was, especially the generic cases, that almost every single time we opened the case, it would like fly out at you. It's like freaking alien all of a sudden. So, 
it's just discontinuing systems was interesting because it, it's kind of like I said in the endless shipments episode, but it's like you're digging a hole and like they're throwing more sand in. It's like, wait a minute, we're trying to get rid of these. Same with the PSP. I almost forgot the PSP even existed, just talking right now. When the PSP was getting discontinued from our store, I don't know if it's discontinued in stores anymore. Um, well, nothing is now, which is the really funny thing because we were selling all those great games for dirt cheap. I mean, like I said, I got Smash Bros, Melee, Pikmin 2 for like five bucks or less. I don't even remember what it was. I just remember looking at my receipt and just, I just couldn't believe what I was looking. I think I also got Super Mario Sunshine at that store. I just, I got like all of the games you could ask for, like the essential games for the GameCube because they were discontinuing them. And I urge you guys, if GameStop decides to discontinue again, all of these older games that they're starting to take in again, N64, GameCube, stuff like that, go to your stores. I'm serious. Especially if um, they have a large stock of those items because they can't ship it all at once. They're not always going to get that call to ship immediately. That's why that store, I just got lucky. Somebody, I guess, had traded them in and they'd either, either gotten off of Pawn. I don't think they had Pawn back then. I don't remember what they had, but they'd either somebody had traded them in and just threw them in the back because they actually had to go into the back for once there's something in the back. Usually there's not. But they actually had to go into the back and get the games for me. Like, oh, by the way, we got all these GameCube games and they're 75% off. So if you catch wind of them discontinuing retro games again, I'm telling you, go get them. Because I remember the purge of PS2 games the first time. And then I guess they had a bunch online because they purged it again. And the games that were online were selling for like fractions, like pathetic amount compared to what they were actually worth. I, I think I actually have a CD case full of games because of course you get it from GameStop. It's not going to be, especially if it's a cheap game, it's not going to be in a case. So... I've got a bunch of games and sleeves like that. I don't know where that is. I need to find that now. When we discontinued PSP games, it was a little bit different. It was interesting because most stores were just shipping them to the stores that were doing well with those products. We didn't really do a fire sale in PSP games. We did a little bit near the end, but we had so few games that were worth anything. There was nothing worth picking up. And like I said, I mean, with PSP games, Oh my god, PSP games were even worse than PS2 when we got shipments of those because I don't know what's wrong with those other stores, but they don't know how to take in trade because whenever you get a PSP game that has that broken plastic where you can just kind of push your finger through, if you don't remember what a PSP game is, it says like plastic UMD discs. So it's this little mini CD inside of a plastic case with a clear front so you can see the artwork on the disc and this plastic disc protector would always be like smashed in by customers I don't know how they did it I think I had a, a one game do that to me but the rest are completely fine and it's just the the design of these UMD discs is just so bad they were so easy to break and we would constantly get shipped these things even when we were discontinued it was just kind of like the same thing um, even when we were shipping it to the other stores, we would get cases with no artwork. Why would you get rid of your case for your PSP game? I don't get it. I mean, they had like some certain booklets that were for storing multiple PSP games, but it's not like it's as convenient as a CD or a cartridge. It's, it's this big wonky plastic disc and the PSP like cases, they're like, they're really tiny. They're, they're long. So like this, but like really skinny. You could you could put them anywhere. They're so small. They're like this is almost perfect actually. They're like the size of this. Little little bit taller. And yet for some reason, these people were not keeping their cases, and I just don't know why. It doesn't make sense to me. Ugh. I know it's a trivial thing keeping your case, but that's why there's so many generic, awful-looking cases at um, GameStop and uh, almost said a Walmart. Ugh. That's the next week. But yeah, that's 
that was what I had to deal with when we were discontinuing games. So it was it was actually kind of a mixed bag. It was, like I said, I enjoy shipping things, so that was a lot of fun. Um, it was, like I said, very frustrating when they were shipping us the same thing we were shipping out. It was fun seeing what games were going to drop to just pennies, and then I could pick up for a steal. And I think everybody should be listening for when they start fire selling stuff like this. But at the same time, they're like selling everything again, even NES games, so... I don't know what GameStop's doing. GameStop doesn't know what GameStop's doing, I mean... I need to do a video on the Elite Plus card, because it's the stupidest thing on the planet. And... Oh my god. Selling off your stock of used... Good retro games, and then now, all of a sudden, you're selling them again. You fire sell, you fire sold them already. You had a huge stock. You could have sat on them, and I'm sure they sat on some of it. But my God, we we fire sold so many great games for dirt cheap, and I can't imagine how much money a lot of those games are worth nowadays. And but nobody predict could predict it, uh, especially GameStop. GameStop could definitely not predict it. I mean, they're on what their second CEO in a month. Like I quit. With no severance, their GameStop CEO quit with no severance package three weeks into being a CEO. What does that say about your company if your CEO quits and just is like, I don't want to be here anymore? Dude, if you leave right now, no severance for you. I don't care. I don't want anything to do with this company. I don't think that's good. I'm sure somebody's going to comment down what the actual backstory is, why he left, but on paper, and it was funny because GameStop was like, this it's not fraud, we promise, there's no fraud here, you don't have to worry. We didn't say it, you said it, nobody was asking about fraud, you just came out and said that there's no fraud, it's, I don't know, it's really funny, so, GameStop, not not power to the players at all. Power to the stockholders. Not even them, actually. So that was discontinuing older generation games. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like down below if you enjoyed the video. And of course, comment down below if you picked up any of those games that they were selling for cheap and what it was. Because I'm really curious. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there have picked up games for just, like, nothing. Like, I... You guys probably have even a better story than I do about picking up cheap games. Maybe you got Clock Tower for a buck. That'd be crazy. So, thanks again for watching. And the podcast has been funded. Thank you so much to all my patrons. We hit the $100 goal. And still trucking forward, we might get to the 150 goal, which I'm going to change from the three videos a week to two podcasts a month instead of the one podcast a month right now. So, I'm going to rework the goals a little bit. And if you do want to listen to the podcast right now, it's up already on Patreon. It'll be coming out, um, I believe, the following Friday because I do want to get it up uh, a week or two before YouTube just because, I mean, they're the ones that funded it. They're the ones that got me this fancy new camera, which hopefully looks a lot better and doesn't do weird glitchy stuff like my phone was. So as always, have a fantastic day. See you guys. It's funny, a lot of people, well, not a lot of people. I remember seeing somebody commented that they didn't think I liked beer because they never see me drinking during the video because I always set my beer down. It's because I talk with my hands like, like a crazy person. I don't know. Mmm. The podcast is an hour and 20 minutes. An hour.